It's okay, Nestor. It's okay. This is Rosie. This is Rosie. She's a good cat. It's okay. There you go. It's okay. It's okay, Nestor. It's okay, little buddy. It's okay. Say, look, Rosie's a good cat. Come on, Nestor, be nice. Be nice, Nestor. There you go. It's okay, little buddy. Welcome to Atlanta. Here's your traffic jam. Hello everyone, today is June 8th, 2018. It is a Friday and I'm out here at the um, Home Depot headquarters for a, a gig. This is this is their corporate picnic and I can't take a whole lot of video because their security is very tight out here. I've been editing vlog 103 now for the last few minutes and when I got to this clip I debated on whether or not I should just delete it out. Uh, but after watching it over a few times I think in the interest of keeping this vlog genuine, I'm going to leave it in in its entirety, but I think it needs a little clarification. Uh, see, what had happened was I had to drive into the middle of Atlanta on a Friday afternoon, and as kind of a country person and a bit of an introvert and somebody that has a little bit of social anxiety, um, it caused me to go through a little bit of a meltdown. Uh, so you guys are going to see a very genuine reaction, somebody like me that doesn't like large crowds, driving through Atlanta on a Friday afternoon. Please don't think that I lose control like this very often, but this was a very genuine reaction, and it really does reflect well on my opinion of cities and just how stupid they are, honestly. So without further ado... Here is the clip. Look at this. This is why I do not understand city people and why anybody would desire a life like this. Just looking at this stresses me the freak out. Within the view of this camera, we've got three red lights, cars backed up to all three, people walking on the sidewalk, no place to actually park, and we've got buildings that are 10, 20 stories high. How are you supposed to even go inside them? You can't even park. People angry, people honking at each other, everybody up on each other's business, butthole to elbow. Why does anybody desire this? This sucks. There's the Blick store right there. And there is my truck right there. I really had to get these markers and the, uh, the other Blix was completely out of them. They stopped carrying them actually. And my order that was supposed to come through the mail had a mix-up and never got it, so I was down to the wire. I had to drive to the middle of Atlanta to get these markers, and I hate driving in Atlanta. And this is what happened. Guys, I just spent $12 in parking to go across the street and spend $24 on markers. I just spent $36, a third of that was just to park my truck. You city people, you city people actually like living like this? You actually think this is a viable way to continue living? To be right up on each other like this? The homeless people asking you for money all the time, constantly waiting in line, getting jammed up, a butthole to elbow with everybody, going down an escalator or getting onto some trolley car or some crosswalk? Right up on each other all the time? No wonder you're always so angry and honking and mad at each other. You know what? If you want to feel less angry, here's a suggestion. Go somewhere where you've got some space. Get out of the city! Wow. This has been your I Hate Cities meltdown. Again, let me clarify that I don't lose control like that very often. That was a circumstance that I tried to avoid as much as possible. And I was able to calm myself down and get out of the city and back to the metro area where I can get some elbow room without sideswiping anybody or anything. I made it out just fine. 
I hope I never have to do that again. Okay, now on with the rest of the vlog. Today is Saturday, June 9th, 2018. It's a little after 7 o'clock in the morning, and I'm out here at the Peachtree Corners Festival in Peachtree Corners, Georgia. Uh, according to Google Maps, this is still Norcross, but they like to claim that it is its own city of Peachtree Corners, and I'm at the Peachtree Corners Festival, third year in a row. 7.29 exactly right now. This is what it looks like. Uh, we don't open until 10 o'clock, but any festival that has streets closed off uh, give their vendors a small window to get set up, and everything is kind of hectic at first. It's going to be very transformed in a very short amount of time. Time for you to come out and go back to work for me. Well, it's 9.15 now. I'm completely set up and ready to go. 45 minutes early this time, so cut it a little closer than I normally do. But we're ready to go, and here is how the street looks now. I'm not going to be able to show a whole lot of this festival because this festival did not provide electricity, so I had to bring in, there it is, my own generator. So I don't want to do a whole lot of walking around and leaving this generator unattended. These things. They tend to disappear pretty easily. Take a look at the um, artistic portalettes. Uh, we've got uh, Mona Lisa not so smiling on this one. They got cops on segways. Terrifying. What is that? That's uh, six of them. I don't think I've ever seen six Chick fil A eat more chicken cows in one place before. Well, it is a little after 7 o'clock now. Uh, at about 6 o'clock when we were closing up, we got rained on. I mean, thunderclap rained on. And I'm starting to realize this new tent has got problems with those water pockets forming, so I'm almost afraid to go all the way back to Douglasville an hour away and be away from it all night where it could collapse again. Anyway, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna think about that right now. I got my first rejection today. That's something else. A rejection is where somebody sees their drawing and just says, no, I don't want it, and refuses to pay for it and walks off. Uh, typically that happens about three to four times a year, and I made it through the first quarter without one. Just got my first one today. And it was a good drawing too. And no, I'm not gonna show you a picture of it. Uh, I do not take pictures of my rejections. They go in the trash, and I don't want to think about them again. I don't want to see them. I don't want to think about them. I don't even know why I'm even talking about it right now. Uh, anyway, I'm all closed up, hoping for the best. But while I'm out here in Norcross, I have got to stop at the Super H Mart. Oh, wait, you can't really see the logo. Here we are. The biggest and best Oriental market, or uh, Asian market, that I have ever been in. Out here around the Atlanta metro area, you've got, I think, what's called the DeKalb Farmer's Market. There's an Austell Farmer's Market. There's a World Market. There's a lot of Asian markets, but you're not going to beat this one. This one's good. Now, they're a little touchy about letting you take videos while you're in there, so I'm going to have to be discreet and quick. Uh... So I'm going to try to get a, at least a little bit of footage while I'm in there, but I'm going to go in there and I haven't eaten at all yet today. So this is where I'm going to have a dinner to Korean food part over here. Little pickled Chinese artichokes. Salmon row here, which is uh, salmon egg sacks. I think I would be willing to try that if this if I knew exactly how to cook it. But uh, I'm going to get this out of curiosity. It feels heavy. It's rice cakes with a sauce. It's prepackaged kind of thing I like. Now I wanted some kimchi, but I can't seem to find a small, inexpensive container of it. Everything is huge. It's like a $13, $14 range. Uh, and even the smaller ones up here are like $6, $7. That's the green onion kimchi. So I think I'm going to skip the kimchi this time. 
sadly enough. Now, of course, I'm not going to be completely adventurous. I'm going to go with a few you've probably seen me get before, uh, starting with the Tamarin, and this is the uh, the Foco brand, which I know I can trust because I've gotten this a few times. So, a few of those. Of course, some um, lychee by the same company, and guava, which I wish I could have found some actual guava in the fruit section because this stuff is fantastic. Um, and these guavas, even though they have seeds, like crunchy seeds right in the middle, you can eat these things entirely from side to side, just leave nothing but the stem. I'm going to try this by a different brand. This is a mixture of lychee and aloe. Uh, only 220 calories for this entire, entire can. And also, I'm going to try some uh, green tea. This is Nyan Scent for this can of green tea, so... Uh, some of you might remember Orbs. Uh, it was that old drink from the mid-90s that had the like little gum balls or uh, just kind of floating in it, suspended, not moving. And you see something like this, uh, coconut pulp or coconut water with pulp. And you think maybe that's hearkening back to those days and this will taste the same. Uh, but uh, trust me when I say I've tried this before and it is terrible. So don't get this. Just just trust me when I say it looks pretty. It does not taste good. But um, I do know that drinks that have um, chia seeds in them like this are supposed to be really good for you. So this one I, I am going to try. You guys know that I am a connoisseur of canned fish, and I've always been impressed by the variety of canned fish in these Asian markets. Uh, today I think I'm going to try roasted eel. And let's say I'm going to try this this one here, and also something called Pacific Suri. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's in a miso sauce, so that's probably going to be good. Give these two a try. These canned quail eggs, I've tried that before. They're actually they were hard for me to stomach. I gave them a try. Uh, now they've even got more canned fish here. These I don't even know what kind of fish they are. Um, and anything that says spicy, stay away from because their definition of spicy is uh, a little more intense than ours. But over here, take a look at this. Tons of variety of tuna. They've got a nice variety of these uh, ramen noodles. If I was to try every single one of these, or even a small portion of these, I would be at it for days. So there's really no way. I could even scratch the surface. Now, if you're going to try one of these, let me warn you from experience, anything that says hot or even has a little chili pepper on it, stay away from it if you're uh, American. <laughs> because, yeah, like, see something like this? It's got a little chili on it? Stay away from that. Because uh, if you're not used to it, if you're not from somewhere that has a lot of really intense spice, you're going to be in pain. Your nose is going to be running, and you're going to... You're not going to have a good time. But uh, see, like this side here is all bowls that you just add hot water to and let, let them simmer for a little while. Very convenient. Now, when I said that I'm going to have dinner here, this is what I meant. Uh, this is the cash registers over here. So right after you get done checking out, uh, right on the other side is a bunch of these, like a food court kind of daily thing. And um, so that's where I'm having dinner today, and I recommend these places. I adore these places. Let me show you what I got today. Today I got something called a bimba. All of this that you see here, including this drink, was about $10.70. Comes with a, a nice bowl of white rice, some miso soup, a bunch of sides, and then the bimba itself. Fried egg in the middle. Plenty of food here. This is going to fill me up really nice. I've had it before, so I'm not going to do the whole taste test thing on camera. Just trust me when I say it's as delicious as it looks. Well, that didn't take long. Wow. wow. <laughs> very, very cool. I gotta take a picture. Uh oh. He's got you now. <laughs> he put his arm on my foot. He's got a gourd here on his other his other arm for tips. It's always good to give these guys a little something. Everything. Um, 
Chris Neuenschwander, one of my friends from the, my days at Six Flags, and current subscriber, came by to see me today and brought me something weird to eat. So he's aware of the, uh, the running theme or gag that I do where I eat something weird on just about every episode. So <laughs> what have you got for us today? So I got you like a lunch thing, which is a, uh, what's a ham? It's a ham and cheese bun. Ham and cheese bun. A ham and cheese bun. And then this thing is the weird thing to eat. And it's a, more like a dessert. It is a, it's called a violet. And okay. it is, uh, it's a bun and it has uh, taro, taro mochi flavored inside. Taro mochi, okay. Yeah, so it's, that's it's like basically a, like a purple blob. It was a okay. purple blob inside. I think I've had mochi before. This is taro flavored mochi. Taro. What is taro exactly? Uh, it's like a root. It's a root. sugar root. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. So yeah. here we go. Let's do it. <laughs> here we go. Grab the yeah. paper for yeah, you. Yeah, pull that paper off. Okay. There you go. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so you see the purple right there. It's got a lot of give to it, too. It's very, very, very fluffy. So here we go. I really like this. It's actually got like a, a spot in the center that is kind of like a, like like doughy, like a sweet doughy center to it there. Very good. Terra root bun, mochi bun. I approve. Violet? That's what it's called. Yeah. Violet. Okay. Yeah. I approve. This is good. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> no problem. It's now time to get all of this into here. Ah, oh, the magic of editing. If only real life was that easy. Well, everything for this weekend is pretty much done. The festival's over and it's about time I started to draw this one to a close. But before I go, I think I'm going to go ahead and try at least a couple of these things from the Super H Mart. Uh, I can't try all of them, of course. I've got three grocery bags full. Grocery bags full. So I think I'm going to just try, today I'm just going to try these candies here, this marshmallow blueberry, I believe is what this is. I'm going to try that, and I'm going to try the, um, I thought it was roasted eel, but it's braised eel. I'm going to try that, and some of these here. What is this? Chinese, I want to say Chinese, uh, pickled Chinese artichokes. So, let me get to it. All right, first thing, the pickled Chinese artichoke. I'm going to put the lid back on. He's going to get into that. All right, pickled Chinese artichoke. A lot more crunchy and not as vinegary and briny as I expected it to be. That what we think of as pickled is like dill pickles, very briny. This is not that. And it's actually got a little bit of a sweet aftertaste to it. You know what? I could actually see this being sprinkled over the top of a uh, salad. Despite the weird shape of them, they taste like they would really complement a good leafy salad perfectly. Okay, now the braised eel. This actually looks very delicious, and apparently it looks delicious to Nestor as well. I'm going to have to move this to a different surface. Uh, he is letting me know that he's displeased with me moving it over. He couldn't get to it. Yeah, I know, I know. All right. Time to give the eel a try. That's actually very tasty. Very zesty. It's got like a sauce to it, too. A very oily sauce to go with it. Very similar to like um, a barbecue sauce, actually. But a little more... Closer to sriracha, really, than barbecue sauce, but it has that oily barbecue sauce thing going for it. And it complements that nice braised eel very well. I'm going to have to say I'll probably get this one again. All right, now the blueberry marshmallow candy. It really does have a little nugget of blueberry jelly right in the middle of it, just like it said it would. Or like the picture indicated that it would. And it's marshmallowy. So it's a little bit sweeter than what I'm used to, sweets being that I get from an Asian market. This is almost American sweet. I really hope it's not going to be a thing now that Asian candies start going a little over the top of the sweetness. I, I've enjoyed the mild sweetness in most of these. Eh, oh well. That's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you all have enjoyed that. Now, before I go, I wanted to mention that my friend that came to see me and brought me that nice lunch out of the festival today... Chris Neuenschwander, he actually makes a living uh, by 
carving print plates, wood carving print plates, and then selling the prints and also selling the wood carvings. Uh, he's got his own website, and he's been at it for a long time. It took him about eight years, and just recently, over the past few years, he's got some really good recognition, and on Instagram alone, he's got over 100,000 subscribers. So, if you like good talent and good artwork, and I know you do if you follow me at all, uh, then please, go to his website. Uh, the link will be in the description, and show him some love. Let him know that I sent you all... 140 of my subscribers have have seen that now, and uh, it's compared to his 10, his 100,000 subscribers. Anyway, uh, we had a nice little talk, and he was uh, he encouraged me to just keep at it and keep making these videos, uh, because eventually I'll get that breakthrough and finally get the recognition. Uh, he's a subscriber, watches my videos, so he might be watching this one. Chris, you are an inspiration. Um, so... There you go for the, that, guys. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, leave comments, leave questions, leave suggestions. Subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon so that you'll start receiving notifications. Share this vlog around with all your other uh, social media, your Instagram, your Twitter, your Snapchats, your Facebooks, whatever, whatever. Uh, give me some new subscribers. I love you guys so much, and I will see you again in the next video.